Hello everyone, with the Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video load there across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. I must apologize for the lack of videos or the lack of posts being made on my other social media platforms. I have been traveling for the past week from the US and now I'm back at home in Jamaica. And unfortunately, I'm still having some issues here regarding my home internet. We know how flow can be, we know how digital can be. Hopefully the situation is sorted out soon so that I don't have to be stealing my neighbor's Wi-Fi to get these videos out. Now before we jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video. I'd really appreciate it if you guys get this video up to 100 likes. If you don't know by now, that's how the YouTube algorithm works. We all like the video and then the YouTube algorithm pushes the video out to more persons during the path of the tropical system. That we can keep everyone safe especially during the peak of Atlantic hurricane season that's August through to October. Share this video with your friends, your co-workers, your relatives and even your church brethren and subscribe if you haven't yet done so. Leave a comment down below letting me know what that has been like in your ear recently. Also feel free to ask any other related question that you might have about the future of the weather in your specific area. Alright so let us take a look at the US National Hurricane Center 7 day graphical tropical weather outlook. We can see that as of their latest update that just came out at 7.34 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is actually 6.34 p.m. Jamaica Time, we see that they have three areas highlighted across the Caribbean. One with a high chance of development across the Gulf of Mexico and two others across the main development region, one with a 50% chance and another with a 40% chance. If we take a look here at the one across the Gulf of Mexico, it says here an air flow pressure located over the Bay of Campeche is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms. This disturbance is forecast to drift slowly northward during the next several days while it interacts with a frontal boundary. Environmental conditions are forecast to become more conducive for development and a tropical depression is likely to form while the system moves generally northward near or along the Gulf Coast of Mexico and Texas through the middle part of next week. Interests along the western Gulf of Mexico coast should closely monitor the progress of the system. And we see that they've given it a 60% chance of cyclone formation within the next 48 hours, that's the next two days, and an 80% chance of cyclone formation within the next seven days. So, what they're saying is that it could affect Texas. We know there are a lot of Jamaicans who work or live there. So, please ensure that you get in contact with them because. It could be a very bad situation. We know how these things go. They might have power outages, whatever the case may be, and you might not be able to get in contact with them for a period of time. We're going to be focusing our attention on the westernmost system because this other one to the east of it seems like it's going to be going more northward, possibly missing the Caribbean in general. Maybe this one closer to the west has a, a better chance of possibly making it to the caribbean we see it could even make that southern motion and possibly clipping the northeastern caribbean who knows we have to stay updated to see what happens according to the hurricane center it says here shore and thunderstorm activity associated with an air of low pressure over the central tropical atlantic has begun to show has begun to show signs of organization gradual additional development of is possible while the system meanders over the central tropical atlantic through monday and then moves generally westward at about 10 miles per hour through the rest of next week we see that they've given it a 30 percent chance of cyclone formation within the next 48 hours that's next two days and a 50 percent chance of cyclone formation within the next seven days and if we take a look at what the models are showing, we're just going to be going out to the next 168 hours. That's the next seven days. So keep your eye on the timestamp at the top and focus your attention on the Atlantic in general. We're going to be looking over here regarding that Gulf of Mexico system. We're going to be looking from the main development region towards the Atlantic, well, the Caribbean, as well as the Southwestern Atlantic right here. More than likely everywhere to see exactly what happened within the next seven days. So as we go out in time, we start to see the air flow pressure in the Gulf of Mexico, a lot of moisture associated with it. Trying to get its act together, but this is just the Euro model. We also see that it tries to make it northward into Texas. Who knows, maybe sections of the <laughs> Louisiana state, Mississippi, whatever you name it. 
and then as we end the 168 hours we don't even see the other systems coming into play but we do see a lot of greens that represent a lot of moisture across the caribbean as well as the southwestern atlantic but what does the gfs show for the same time period let's go out in time and see what unfolds the gfs definitely has strong growth that gulf of mexico system we see it right there wrapping up as it heads northward and then look at this starting to come into play the system across the main development region starting to push westward let's see exactly what it does maybe clipping the northern portion of the leeward islands maybe passing to the north of puerto rico but we're gonna be going back and stopping at the next 168 hours so we see some differences at the end of the 168 hours on the euro we don't see much of anything on the euro model on the gfs model the gfs is the only one showing this system so we just have to take these forecasts with a grain of salt because they might not happen at all these are what the models do especially the gfs showing something coming this way and then when it's actually time for us to see if it's actually you know unfolding or coming to fruition it doesn't occur this is why we have to look at both models to see exactly what they do and considering that it's so far out in time it doesn't even make sense but we're gonna be you know continuously watching these systems to see exactly what unfolds and i'll definitely be here to keep you posted as time goes on if we take a look at the surface map of the Atlantic for this evening, we can see that we still have the ridge of high pressure right here to the north that's responsible for sending all of the easterly trade winds across the main development region into the Caribbean. And with these easterly trade winds, we have a lot of tropical waves pushing from east to west as well. One right here across the eastern Caribbean, another one right here across the central portion of the main development region. That's one of the systems that the Hurricane Center is watching. We can see the frontal boundary right here across the southeastern U.S. section of the Gulf of Mexico that the Hurricane Center mentioned as well. If we take a look at the visible satellite images of the Atlantic before the sun went down, we can see the clouds associated with the frontal boundary right here across the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Definitely doing a number right here on the southern portion of the U.S. Lots of clouds, showers and thunderstorm activity, even portion of the southeastern United States, Florida as well. We can also see the clouds associated with the tropical wave across the eastern caribbean we can also see the upper level wind shear pushing all those high cold cloud tops off towards the northeast so most of the rainfall associated with this tropical wave definitely off to the northeast of the windward islands we can see the clouds associated with that other tropical wave right there across the main development region we'll be talking more about the rest of the caribbean today later on let us focus our attention on what took place across jamaica for today so we can see on the visible satellite images that we definitely had some clouds popping up across the island first of all we had the winds coming in more so from the east curving kind of to the north and west and then during the afternoon we had the daytime heating that diurnal convection that brought the thunderstorms those cumulonimbus clouds across especially northern and western parishes in jamaica and we saw those high cold clouds being blown off towards the southwest by that northeasterly wind shear that portion that jamaica was receiving today and we can see it all even better in the latest infrared satellite images of jamaica the thunderstorms that took place the high cold cloud tops are the cumulonimbus and nimbus clouds as represented by the blues greens yellows oranges reds and the sparkling white dust that we know represents some amount of lightning strikes if not lightning flashes so we definitely had a thunderstorm activity across sections of saint anne sections of maybe Trelawney getting in on the mix section of saint mary section of saint james hanover westmoreland northwestern saint elizabeth for sure and then by the time recording this video majority of these clouds have definitely dissipated and we can definitely see how that upper level wind shear blew those high cold cloud tops off towards the south and west so more overcast skies especially across sections of clarendon manchester and most of saint elizabeth than anything else and if we take a look at the latest image we can see that just came out at 15 minutes past the hour that's what 7 15 pm considering that it is 7 25 pm no but this just came out 10 minutes ago you can see jamaica is starting to clear out not much of anything taking place and the cube and doppler radar is definitely in consensus with this not seeing much of anything this latest cube and doppler radar image just coming out at 10 minutes past eight and um, the most we see some greens right here to the northwest of the island some isolated shores right there to the east of the cayman island the guantanamo bay cuban military radar not showing much of anything between haiti jamaica and cuba and we can see that isolated shore activity right there on the cayman radar 
some of which right there to the northwest of Jamaica, some of which right there to the west of the Cayman Islands, right there. If we take a look at the temperatures right now, we can say we have 28 degrees Celsius in both Montego Bay and Kingston. And by about 4 a.m. on Sunday, temperature should have down to about 25 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay and Kingston. Taking a look at the temperature forecast for tomorrow. Sunday at 18 Z, which is actually 1 p.m., has Jamaica getting in on some yellows and some oranges, maybe up to what? Two degrees Celsius or more above average temperatures, as we can see by the key on the right. So the temperatures are definitely going to be warmer than normal. I know the average temperatures are the normal temperatures for the month of September across Jamaica are about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. 90 degrees Fahrenheit, when calculated, is about the same as 32 degrees Celsius. So it should be receiving anywhere from 32 to 34, hopefully not up to 35 degrees Celsius for Jamaica's temperature on Sunday. So it's definitely going to be a good day for some washing, especially if you're on the south coast. In order to beat the heat, we know we have to stay hydrated. We can take some cool showers, rest more, eat fresh fruits, seek shade, you name it. And, you know, you can turn that AC on, even although we know how the... <laughs> electricity bill is going to be ridiculous but we have to stay cool we don't want to catch any heat stroke anytime soon if you take a look at the saharan dust forecast for 2 p.m on sunday we can see a tongue of saharan dust right there stretching all the way from africa into portion of the southern bahamas turks and caicos but nothing expected across the caribbean we see more clear skies than anything else some saharan dust right here across the southern main development region closer to africa as well but that's just about it. We're definitely getting in on a break from the Saharan dust. And considering that we're getting into the peak of Atlantic hurricane season, it just spells trouble, more moisture, more tropical waves, more development in general. So we have to pay close attention to what's happening. Even although it's kind of dead right now, we're indeed grateful for that. We don't want the systems at all. Can we really manage another burial? No, we can't. So let's just be grateful that we're getting in on more of these afternoon rainfall provided by these tropical waves, if not troughs, for the time being. If we take a look at the wave forecast for tomorrow, we see that majority of the Caribbean should be getting in on those lighter shades of blues, the darker shades of blues that we can see by the key on the bottom right that represents anywhere from 0 0.5 for meter wave height all the way up to 1.5 meter wave height. And that's because the winds are going to be averaging anywhere from 10 to 20 knots. And we see the general flow of these winds across the Caribbean coming in from the east, curving northward across the western Caribbean. So more of a southeasterly flow across the western Caribbean. But as it relates to what's expected across Jamaica for tomorrow, look at this. We're getting in on an east, an easterly flow. We can see that flow coming in from the east, curving northward on the south coast right there. We can see it right there on the north coast as well. But we can see the least amount of winds are where the air is going to be piling up more so across northern and western Jamaica again. So it might just have those cumulus clouds becoming mid-level rain clouds, if not upper-level cumulus nimbus clouds, again on the north coast as well as on the western portion of the island. And with that upper-level wind shear forecast is still coming in or is still coming from the northeast tomorrow. Look at that. This is valid for 18 on Sunday, which is actually 1 p.m. on Sunday from the GFS. So we're still going to be getting on that upper level wind. So we're just going to be getting on something that took place again today. When we had the thunderstorms across northern Jamaica and those high cold clouds blew those thunderstorm tops off towards the southwest, bringing more overcast skies to section of some southern parishes. So overcast skies for southern Jamaica, thunderstorms across northern and western parishes that's exactly what's expected and we know northern parishes are talking about those parishes on top like hanover st james trelawney st Anne, st mary portland well western parishes and we're talking about those parishes in the county of cornwall so st elizabeth westmoreland hanover st james and trelawney and according to what the rainfall forecast maps are showing this map from the year and this map from gfs are both showing what's expected across jamaica regarding rainfall for 4 p.m eastern standard time which is actually 3 p.m jamaica time and we can see the blues that represent rainfall across northern and western parishes in Jamaica for sure. So maybe a section of western Portland, St. Mary, St. Antrilani, St. James, a section of Hanover, Westmoreland, and maybe even a section of northern or northwestern St. Elizabeth might get in on the mix. That's on the GFS, the Euro showing something similar. Euro trying to incorporate some more of northeastern St. Catherine, northern St. Andrew, a section of St. Thomas and Portland. We'll see how that goes. 
either way we're working with consensus and it's definitely for northern and western jamaica the year on the gfs models showing the most in the way for rainfall across western jamaica on the euro showing all the way up to 0.5 of an inch of rainfall gfs showing all the way up to 0.34 of an inch of rainfall across the northwest we'll see how that goes and either way we're indeed grateful we're in the month of september we shall receive an increase in the amount of rainfall <laughs> for the entire year in general this is kingston's bar graph at the top we shall receive almost a hundred millimeters of rainfall that's almost four inches of rainfall and in montego bay we shall receive what all the way up to almost seven inches of rainfall that's almost what yeah 125 50 175 millimeters that's almost 175 clearly montego bay gets more rainfall than kingston for sure and you can do the math yourself considering that one inch of rainfall is about the same as 25 millimeters of rainfall and you can visit weatherandclimate.com to find out about what the rainfall is like throughout the year for your specific parish all right so that's it for the forecast across jamaica let us focus our attention on the rest of the caribbean so as stated the tropical wave is definitely doing a number on the northeastern caribbean islands Cloud showers and thunderstorms portions of Puerto Rico, the eastern British Virgin Islands, section of the Leeward Islands ashore. Clouds associated with the frontal system across the southern United States and the southeast as well, Florida for sure. Section of Nicaragua, as usual, Central America getting in on some thunderstorm activity. Panama, Costa Rica as well, not to mention section of Venezuela, Colombia in the mix. If we take a look at the Doppler radar images of the northeastern Caribbean to confirm what that tropical wave is doing, we can definitely see the moisture associated with it. Look at this. The greens, the yellows, that we know represent some light to moderate even some heavy rainfall in some spots. Look at all of this rainfall to the north of Martinique. Look at the rainfall to the east of Dominica, in and around Guadeloupe, in and around Monster Rat, sections of Antique and Barbuda getting in on the mix. Some rainfall right there to the south of the US Virgin Islands. Some rainfall right there across northern and eastern portions of Puerto Rico too. Even sections of the eastern portion of the Dominican Republic getting in a summer rainfall as we speak. And if we take a look at the Barbados radar, we can see some rainfall in and around Barbados, especially to the east of there with those blues, greens, yellows that represent some light to moderate, even some slightly heavy rainfall. And we can see some rainfall right there to the north of Martinique. And if we take a look at the weather of Doppler radar images, we can see that rainfall across section of Florida, some isolated shores across section of northwestern cuba some rainfall right there across section of honduras section of guatemala getting in on the mix and we can also see some of that rainfall across northern venezuela and if we take a look at where the rainfall is expected in the next 24 hours this map from the year and this map from gfs are showing where it's going to be raining from now up until thursday on monday which is actually now until 10 p.m on sunday we can see all the colors that represent all the way up to an inch of rainfall in the red the purples that represent all the way up to three inches of rainfall and we definitely are going to be getting all the way up to three inches of rainfall across portion of panama costa rica right there as we see both the year the gfs models are in consensus with that and definitely a lot of rainfall for sections of the northeastern caribbean where that tropical wave is right now so anywhere from haiti and the dominican republic eastward puerto rico the eastern british virgin island antigua and barbuda and Guila, st kitts and nevis section of Guadeloupe, Dominica, Martinique, St. Lucia, Barbados, section of Guyana, Venezuela, ABC Islands might get another some of the mixture of rainfall, maybe some isolated spots, not anything too tremendous, section of Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, section of El Salvador, Guatemala, Belize, and the Yucatan Peninsula. And we can see that both the year and the GFS models are in consensus with this forecast. And with that when they're in consensus like this, the chances of it actually happening are much higher. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching.